we are here back with 6th of February's God's blessing. Now many people think that spirituality is a line of work actually or it is something which is like work which you do after you retire from a job or you get retired from a business or you pay your children take over your business and then you have ample time to actually ponder over it. Well, let me be very frank and straightforward with you. It's a very sad affair to think something like this because we are spiritual beings who are constantly doing a karma and if you're not aware of how to be spiritually awakened to do karma then every karma which we do becomes a pap karma that means a sin and when you reach 60 imagine the amount of pap you must have or you would have accumulated and then you think at the age of 60 to have that level of zeal and enthusiasm and focus to remember God. I believe it is very important. Like in the earlier days in the Guru Kulit, from childhood one was taught how to be spiritual and how to be connected. And we have come into a world of fallacy. That means we are into a false belief that it is only after 60 that you go into Dharma. We are Dharmic beings. We are religious beings, souls who have to be in Dharma from the time we breathe and from the time we breathe our last. So let's understand and let's find out that how can we be happy and cheerful even in a spiritual life and actually be a spiritual being and always be happy and cheerful while doing everything which we have to do. Right from your <clears throat> household chores, from your work, that is job, your business, taking care of children, family members and everything else. So let's hear from God himself. Father says, may you be constantly cheerful and have the fortune of happiness by churning knowledge playfully and moving forward. God says this knowledge of the soul and the supreme soul is not dry. It's a habit for us human beings to start looking for happiness from our five senses. Not knowing that everything which we look for happiness in the physical world out there is not going to last for long. The only being who is everlasting in the supreme soul. So what about taking happiness and love and bliss from him instead of looking at it in the world out there. If you get tired looking at it, please go ahead. But then there will be a point where you will be feeling that it's time for a permanent love and happiness. That's the time, please come back to Brahm Kumaris. We are going to welcome you with open hands. So God says, this is very entertaining knowledge. You simply have to remember <coughs> your new titles every day. Now God has given us a title. That first title is, I am a soul. What type of a soul am I? Okay, I'm a peaceful soul. I'm a powerful soul. So sometimes I am the soul of an artist. Sometimes I'm the soul of a businessman. Continue to move forward while being playful in this way. That means I am playing the role of a mother. So I'm the soul playing the role of a mother. I'm the soul playing the role of a husband. I'm the soul playing the role of a sister, brother, wife, child, daughter son and be playful so God says when you remember that you are a soul playing that role then you'll understand that a soul is always generous kind jovial peaceful powerful humble tolerant patient and then you play the role of a mother of a father of a brother and a sister so that the role which you play is accurate but if you don't play the role accurately with all those qualities that means we are using some form of negative quality that could be ego jealousy hatred or something else and the role which we play will not be so happening or it won't bring us joy and happiness and won't keep us cheerful because we have used certain negative traits so what it means to have the title that i'm a soul playing the role of a mother makes it easier and makes us aware that what kind of a role i'm supposed to play the hero role or the villain role God then says, I am a soul of a businessman. Continue to move forward while being playful in this way. The father is playfully. See how he becomes the laundry man, sometimes the creator of the world. So Godfather laundry man doesn't mean that he God comes and he cleans our clothes. What he means to say is, we souls have actually dirtied our aprons. Aprons are not physical aprons. These are the aprons of a karma. So he denotes them as karmic aura. He cleans our aura. He cleans the soul that we are. 
So he becomes the laundry man who cleans us of our dirt, of the different stains of bad karma which we have in our mind and intellect. So he's actually calling the soul as the kapala or as the cloth which needs to be cleaned. It's an example. It's not exactly that the soul is a cloth. Sometimes the creator of the world. So he becomes the creator of the world. Sometimes the obedient servant. That means whatsoever we say, Godfather, you know, I want to do this kind of work so as to help other souls out. He says, as you wish, so shall it be. He becomes the obedient servant. As in the father, as is the father, so are the children. So the father's duty is the son's duty. And son over here, irrespective of whether a male body or a female body, is the soul. Turn this knowledge playful by in this way and remain cheerful and you will be said to have the fortune of happiness. So it's a very intelligent way, a smart way or a playful way of remembering this knowledge. So instead of just calling him Godfather, you can call him Daddy also. Daddy, I'm going for my work. Please be with me. Help me, guide me and let me use your divine qualities to get the work done. Or Daddy, I'm going to meet my son, my daughter. Let our relationship be full of love and happiness and humility and joy. Let me be very humble and tolerant when I meet them. In whatever way you want to go about it. So you can call him as a father, you can call him as a teacher. Teacher, kindly teach me the method of surviving this kind of turmoil or surviving this kind of situation in my life. Teach me the methods and you can actually be in connection with him in every state, in every situation. Instead of just saying God, 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 God or Allah, Allah, Allah. More than that, you can actually connect to him in so many ways. You can make him like your friend. He's an infinite being, infinite energy who can be with you as a friend. It's not that he becomes a friend, friend, but he becomes an energy of friendship, which you might be lacking. Nobody's, no friend is able to guide you or they're telling you 10 different things and you're getting confused. So you asking him of his opinion as a friend. And that is also a form of meditation. That's also a form of connection or yoga. And that's what we learn in Brahma Kumaris in a very simple and a refined manner. You two can come and learn this beautiful knowledge and the method of connecting to the Creator. Om Shanti with this.